while everybody is excited about AI, ironically, enterprise AI projects are failing at a staggering rate. And here is what nobody's talking about. It's not the algorithm that's broken. New data from Coinbase's latest enterprise survey reveals that companies missing the AI wave are losing an average of $87 million annually, while early adopters are pulling ahead by mastering a few critical things that most other organizations get wrong. I'm here with Chris Bridgeland from Coinbase to break down their findings on why some AI investments pay off while other crash and burn. Chris, Coinbase research shows early adopters are creating a massive competitive gap. The survey identified a couple of specific factors that separate winners from stragglers. Can you walk me through what your survey discovered? Well, I think I think the early adopters um, have have got a few tr things right. In essence, they've they've done a, a couple of things. Number one, I think they've they spent time getting their data in good order. Um, they've they've really looked at the data and the data challenge, and actually, data sprawl is is one of the biggest challenges I think a lot of them see. But but getting that data under control, so they know they've got a good data set to work off in the first place. And secondly, I think the other piece that that we see, and it comes up in the survey, about eighty one percent, I think, of the people that we surveyed um, suggested that that sort of um, education and experimentation was absolutely. Key. So educate the teams on what they should do, how they should go about doing it, what boundaries, what, what guardrails should be put in place from, from a company perspective and using the data effectively. Um, but also experimentation, allowing people to go and see what they can do. As long as those guardrails are all very clearly understood, it should actually flow through very comfortably. So I think the early adopters have really done a good job around the, uh, the data. Piece, and they've done a good job around the education and, and giving their teams the ability to go and experiment. If I ask you, what are the biggest roadblocks your survey identified that prevents organizations from getting value out of their AI investments? So, so I've, I've been in the industry um, you know, for, for a while now, and, and I think things like master data management have been a continual challenge. Most organizations have, have claimed that they've got a project going on, but, but in essence, that cleanliness and that, that, that piece is, is key. So, so I think, I think, and I was with a customer just the other day down in Asia Pacific, um, who was, who was in the process. Their, um, data and AI team, their number one priority right now is get the data clean before they do any AI projects. So they said it, we will waste time more so than we'll, we'll get good experience. We'll waste time by working on data that isn't good, good and clean. So I think everybody, if, as long as they'd start looking at number one, where is the data that I'm going to make decisions on? Where is the data that's going to feed the AI projects effectively? If I get my handle on that piece and also the security and the risk aspects associated with it, work with your security teams to truly understand what the what level of data can be used, especially if I'm going to be using external tools and, and capabilities. You know, just basically making sure I know what's what's right instead of being shut down halfway through a, an AI project because you're you're contravening sort of compliance activities or security activities defined by the company. So get those in place up early and then start 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 playing with with platforms and, and choose the right platforms that are going to give you a you know the biggest and broadest experience in one hit. People and AI go hand in hand. I want to dig a bit into the people and culture side of the story. Organizations are rushing to implement AI, sometimes making hasty decisions about workforce changes while their teams are not fully prepared for these new technologies. What cultural and people related changes are there that you are seeing that create roadblocks for AI success? I think I think there's there's some elements that sort of pop up in there. We didn't really go into the sort of the, the the people aspect as such. So I think I think first of all it was more around what the companies were seeing more so. I think the 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 element that you're touching on is something that's sort of slightly outside of the survey itself. I think there's there's certainly an element where um based on my conversations with customers where they're saying I can bring efficiencies in here. And and the efficiencies are, are more around can I can I get my people instead of maintaining it something, can I get my people innovating a lot more? And I think there's there's been a big you know a big push to 
step away from operational tasks and get into innovation tasks. Um, and, and I think there's, there's always an open door. If your company is looking to keep ahead of the curve, you know, yesterday it was machine learning, then it was generative AI. Now we're into agentic AI. We've also got people getting into things like humanistic AI conversations as well around, you know, how do I, how do I make it feel real? You know, the, part of it is if I got my bots and things like that, you know, there's lots of new skills that people are going to no doubt want to get into and learn. It's the, it's more the thing of, I, I think once they've got certain elements done, it's being able to go and take on new new capabilities and the next you know generation ai you know activity of you know what's the next evolution of ai uh what's it going to be and uh you know giving people the opportunity to go and play with those things in the future as well so i i'm not seeing personally i'm not seeing the clear indicators of of this role will disappear what i am seeing is this role will be get will will get better, or this this interaction with my clients and my customers will get better. Therefore, we will be looking for what's the next thing that we're going to be doing next. Let's talk about the cost of inaction for companies that are slow to act on AI. What are they losing? Is it mostly about revenues, or are there bigger risks like brand perception and customer trust as well? Well, I think you know, the the survey talked about the fact that when we when we asked people roughly what did they what they you know had they experienced loss in revenues and other things along those lines, um, it, I think it was factored around about eight point six percent of annual revenue if you don't jump on it. Um, and for some organizations, depending on obviously your, your revenue, you could be comfortably well into the tens of millions. And I think in, in the report we talked about on average around about $87 million of missed opportunity and, 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 and revenues lost. And that could be a, a, a function of, of multiple things. Number one, your competition was much faster than you and therefore they attracted the, you know, your customer base away. Uh, it could be down to the fact that you are sh sl shown to be slow lower in the marketplace and certainly if you're a public company that will show itself up on a, on a quarterly basis and you will be you know found wanting at that sort of point and so the the key point is really trying to make sure that you are you are being able to still still keep ahead of the curve um but but ultimately that that sort of the reputational you know damage of you not being in in with the times and up with the uh, the technology that's out there today could could really sort of slow you down and be negative financially and reputationally your research found that customers are planning infrastructure investment life cycle of around 18 months due to rapidly evolving ai requirements what is this telling us about how data architecture needs are also changing and evolving yes yeah, so i think i think um Everybody's been through the sort of the big data um, sort of concepts, you know, get my data lake and everything will be fine. The reality is that most of those most of those systems, um, you've got disparate data data repositories, and what comes along with each of those different repositories is is different tool sets, different ways in which you're interacting with them, and you create in essence silos of capability, silos of data, and silos of tool sets that don't transition themselves across the whole data set if you're, if you're looking at that. So I think that in its own right causes, a, certainly from an infrastructure standpoint, a, a little bit of a challenge. And I think there's also um, an element of, of the, you know, the, the infrastructure itself is, has, has a sort of a shelf life. Today, knowing what AI is already doing with the whole NVIDIA GPU approach to doing things and the processing power potentially is going to get sort of exponential that, that the, the talk from, you know, many of the customers that we, we uh, spoke to, we, they believe around about 18 months is the current life cycle based on the infrastructure investments they've made. And that's a combination of the database technologies being able to keep up with the with the, with the changes of the world, as well as the infrastructure, and uh, and it's driving a lot of people to go to where you know the cloud, for example, the cloud vendors I think could be the big winners out of this um, of being able to provide in essence the processing power and consolidation power for them. The report highlights that around eighty one percent of successful companies prioritize experimentation. How can organizations create the right guardrails and environment to try new ideas without putting themselves at risk? Or in other words, how should organizations actually approach AI experimentation? So, so I think the um, experimentation, first of all, I think coming back to one, one of the things I said earlier on, understand what the guardrails are. 
Okay. Once you've got the guardrails defined, it gives you boundaries in which you're going to go and say, okay, this is what I, what my experimentation is going to do. And this is, this is the, the, the working set I'm going to go with. And I'm going to keep everybody happy because I'm doing it in the right manner for the company. I'm doing it ethically uh, in the right way as well, because that's also a big concern for, for organizations today. Do I use public you know, LLMs, for example, or do I, use, do I bring the LLMs internally because obviously data privacy and other things like that. So once I understand what my boundaries are, I can then understand what my, my flexibility is and how, how far I can go and experiment. Um, and obviously a lot of people are looking at, you know, if I bring the public tool sets in house, what risks does that, that that sort of kick in there? So, so get the boundaries right. Get the the, the ex expectation with your you know security teams and your your compliance teams and risk teams to basically make sure you're good to go, and then really create a platform. So I think part of it is is finding a you know finding technologies that will give you as many different experiences as possible. Whether you're looking at just bringing data in and doing a sort of a in essence a trawling through it from an analytics workflow perspective. Or whether you're looking for that same data set to have a vector capability to go and feed the AI sort of use cases and proximities that you're looking for when you're when you're searching through your data um, around that side of things. So, so being able to get that side of things all up and running, I think, is is one of the sort of the key pieces to allow that sort of experimentation. And once once that's in place, it's it's literally. You know, it's like the the Italian throwing pasta at the wall. You know, let's see what sticks. Let's go try something out. Let's go get the teams and and really go and get that cycle of things. Fail fast if you can, because equally also in our in our um, report they were talking about I think around about seventy five percent of um, of customers who said even if we made mistakes. It was a great learning experience. We, you know, if we, if we had a failed project or something didn't quite work out, we knew what not to do next time, but also we took some good, good tips and hints and, and things about that. So there's always that learning from when things go wrong as much as when things go really well. And one of our customers, just as a little anecdote, one of our customers at the moment, um, when we went to see them just over a month ago, um, they, we asked them the question about uh, projects. They said they got 300 AI projects currently on the go. Um, and seven of those have made it into production, which means that they've got, you know, 200 plus still needing or 290 plus still being worked on, but they are absolutely adamant that this is the, the, the right way that they need to go about doing it because they want to build intelligence into the platform they provide to their customers and their clients. Well, let's just be realistic and practical. From a practical standpoint, what should enterprises expect from a modern developer data platform if they want to really move the needle on AI success? Well, this this is something that um, I don't know if you how, how closely you've you've followed Couchbase's sort of history. You know, when we came out in 2011, we were a caching engine. We sat in front of relational databases, and over the years, it's our customers that have helped us evolve into what we are today. And 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 I think this is what people are looking for. They're looking for a data platform, not a database. They're looking for a data platform that can also provide everything from standard sort of caching and index and query type type responses um, to analytics workloads and getting into now the whole vectorization and and feeding in essence uh, agentic AI approaches as well and have those hooked into those. So so I think one of the things that we've been really proud of is the fact that our customers have been at possibly our best guides um, in turning around to us and saying. We want you to be a platform that we can, you know, bring our data into. We want you to be the single source of truth. We want you to be the system of record and we want to be the place where we go and experiment. And that's really resonating well with, a, with, with our customer base. And, and it's, and it's sort of, in essence, giving us really strong confidence that we're doing everything right in the, both in the on-premise environments as well as in the cloud for our customers as well. And that's a perfect segue to bring Couchbase back into picture. How does Couchbase's platform help enterprises address fragmentation, data quality, and AI governance? And how does feedback from the surveys shape your roadmap? Yeah, so so step one is is 
provide a, a data repository that is high performance. And so, so our platform was, was designed to be very performant and very robust. And we, we've got customers around the globe that obviously use our, our technology names that you will, you will know, um, you know, in the industry. Um, companies like LinkedIn and, 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 you know, retailers like Tesco's and others like that. So they're using it to keep their, their business alive and keep their interactions going continuously. And, you know, lots in the financial world as well. So, Big thing for us was has, has, has always been around um, making sure that we are, you know, in essence, spending time with our customers and, and understanding what they're looking at doing. The development teams don't want to be DBAs. They 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 just want to have a platform that they can turn around and say, right, is my tool set, you know, back to your thing about the uh, the hammer and the nail uh, sort of comments, which is, you know, if, 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 uh, if all you got is a hammer, everything is a nail. The reality is I need to have a better tool set. I need to know that there are going to be times where I'm going to be using standard ways in which I'm going to interact with my data. And that's the same data set, or I'm going to go into vectorization. I'm going to vectorize that same data and go in, come in through, through vector approaches and getting into agentic AI approaches of being able to go and assess that data and be able to go and in essence, um, in essence, evolve that data, you know, with, with, with regards to sort of, um, not only the generative content creation, but now the context, um, uh, and sort of aspect that you get out of the, um, um, you know, and the process automation that you get out of Agentic. And so being able to turn around to a customer and say, I've got you a single platform that you can, as you evolve, and as you evolve your applications and use case, you're not changing your platform. You're not learning new tricks. You're just learning the new ways in which you can engage. Um, it's really resonating with um, a lot of the customers that are out there today. And, and Couchbase, I think, is 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 certainly in a in a position right now where we're ticking a lot of the boxes for customers to use us as as a platform, as a, a highly or well respected and 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 well considered platform for them to basically go and do their AI applications against. How does Couchbase's platform help enterprises address issues like fragmentation, data qualities that your own research shows are killing AI initiatives? And also talk about what role do these surveys play in refining your own roadmap? If you're looking for a data, a data platform that can provide you with a transactional, analytical, mobile as well, which is one of the capabilities that we have, being able to take AI workloads all the way out to the mobile devices with Vexa, um, you know, that's one of the things that Couchbase is is it has a, a quite a uniqueness right now. Now, you know, we've been innovating for a while. Um, it won't you know, won't be a surprise if anybody else starts innovating in a very similar way. But I'd say you know we we feel very proud of what our customers have helped us do because they've kept us honest and kept us basically driving forwards in a in a way that that satisfy their needs for the, for the future. Chris, thanks for sharing these insights and the real world lessons from Couchbase's CIO survey. This conversation makes it very, very clear that AI success is not about the model. It's about the data foundation. It's about culture and the platform you build it on. Thank you very much. Cheers, Swapnil. Much appreciated. Thanks for your time. And back to our audience. If your company is tackling these challenges and wants to share your story, we would love to hear from you. So please don't hesitate in reaching out to us. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more conversations that matter in the enterprise tech. See you next video.